Hey folks, Steve here with another BCS video. In this video, we're going to be doing at least turn two. <laughs> I may uh, speed things up because I think, you know, I I always feel a little bad um, when I do one of the longer videos and I'm just having a hard time uh, executing the rules because as soon as I try to do something, I go, oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I'm doing that right. Let me double check. And I'm thinking maybe if I just pop over, look at the rule book, I can get an answer really quick, but then I'm like sitting there or standing here uh, longer than I intended, and that adds runtime to the video. I, I I feel like after so many years of doing this, I would just get better at that sort of thing and, and the recording discipline. And maybe I'm not so good at that uh, as I think I am. So I apologize if, if there's a lot of dead air in some of the uh, previous videos. I want to cut that down as much as humanly possible. Um, and I'm going to try to do shorter cuts as we go through recording this video. And we're also going to cover a lot uh, in each cut. So, um, or, you know, more, more gameplay will have occurred between each cut. Uh, so that one, um, you're, you're not seeing me do the really boring stuff of just counting all the hexes, uh, making sure that the right movement uh, is being applied in each and every case. Um, that should help make this video uh, more substantial and, and entertaining, if anything else. So uh, turn one was an interesting turn. Um, so out of the 13 total turns, uh, the first turn was momentous. The uh, Germans came on strong. They've taken Lunaville, um, which is really great defensive uh, terrain to have taken because it's a city. It's beyond a river. Um, the Americans tried to make an assault across that river, and it went extremely poorly for them. Uh, which maybe is going to set the tone for much of the rest of the campaign at this point. So um, I think I made a smart move by only allocating the, well, it was only smart in in the stupidity of my other half. So sending one of the Panzer Brigades was sufficient to take a victory hex. The other one is still making progress uh, over in the east uh, and in the north up here. Uh, making progress, uh, trying to chip away at the Combat Command A of the 4th Armor. Um, but, you know, had I not stupidly activated the 2nd Cavalry first, you know, maybe let's pretend that I pulled chits for a second and I pulled their chit. I really should have activated the uh, Combat Command R, moved them into Lunaville just as soon as I was able, accepting any mixed formation situation because... Um, we just needed to get in there and hold it and be in a better defensive position. The second cavalry was not enough. And one of those fresh Panzer Brigades came through, crashing through, got their second activation, uh, which was lucky. They, they might not have gotten that. Um, but that was enough to, um, you know, that was enough to have taken care of business there. Now, there's one thing I maybe have gotten wrong. I might have to go review the video footage of previous um, about getting into Lunaville itself as a victory point hex, I would have had to place <clears throat> one of my objective markers, like, on the hex. Um, I'm, I'm assuming I probably, if I had not done that, if I did not remember to do that, I believe that I could have, and it wouldn't have made have much difference. So, I'm sure over the course of the last turn, I probably made a couple of mistakes, minor mistakes, but... Um, I feel confident enough that this all played out well enough that we can continue. Um, I do have uh, things arrayed over here as we're having multiple reinforcements come in on turn two. I've already done some of the preliminary stuff, so let's talk about that very quickly. Um, especially with the, the map panned, or the camera panned to this part of the map that's going to be uh, interesting to see how the situation develops. First of all, we rolled uh, weather. Now, uh, we got fog again, so uh, a lot of the same restrictions um, that are a bit agonizing because there's certain parts of the system we haven't gotten to enjoy the same way, uh, like spotting and uh, uh, engagement zones and all of that haven't been as much of a factor because the guys can't see too far ahead because of the fog. But the fog continues for yet another turn. We'll be interested to see how that goes. For the Allied Air Points, though, I rolled a 6, which is a, a big help to them, a huge deal. That gives them two Air Points, as well as uh, Bazooka Charlie, uh, Charlie Bazooka, Bazooka Charlie Air Point. 
Um, so they're, they're getting as much as they can get in the fog. Is that as good as clear weather? No, but at this point, they, uh, Americans need all the help they can get for that. Um, we also have reinforcements, and by and large, these are American reinforcements, and they're, they're coming in uh, with, a, with a decent uh, set of forces, but they are all sort of over in this quadrant. So we do have, um, just to show, the Combat Command B of the 6th Armor uh, at last coming on to the board here. At last, it's turn two. Uh, but it's not a very big uh, force. So as I look to see, like, okay, they can flip to a seven. That's, that's pretty good. And by that, I mean their armor value plus their action rating for engagement purposes. It's basically these two task forces and, uh, they have six steps each, which means they're, they're not going to go away very quickly. Um, this, the question is, what are we going to be able to do with them as they come onto the board? I think there's an obvious need uh, to try to come in, and, and they're kind of forced to, to come in at uh, this, this reinforcement site, you know, B. I don't want them to get tied up and cross streams here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them in uh, there, I guess. It, it's not ideal, um, certainly, but it, we're going to have to make something make something happen there. So they'll come up through the track. That's going to be a slight problem for some of our snafu roles, having your combat trains stuck on a track. But they'll come up here and at least make sure <clears throat> that the U.S. forces can't be separated from one, one another entirely, which would make it hard for them to pivot one way or another. Um, so that that's their intent. They're going to come on and do that. Further south is the 106th cavalry group coming on and burning them in here at sea and they've got some more of these recon units and I mean they're hardier they have four steps each I don't know that there's going to be much for them to do uh, because at this point they need to get across the river the Germans are now solidly holding that river line um, so what these guys can really do uh, I'm not sure I, I need to figure out some other place to take them or do something with them, I don't feel they're, they're going to add a huge amount of value at the outset. We need to figure out some other way of, uh, of operating with these guys. So they're, that's kind of a weird one. Um, and then finally, the uh, 79th Infantry is coming on. They have a, a pretty potent force, uh, but it is infantry. So they're going to be coming onto the board um, and really the best thing that I can do with them, given I had to bring them in over here, is see if I can get across the river. That, that's kind of my best bet. Um, they do have tanks and support, so they have red support from uh, this support unit here. They also have limited support if, you know, for some reason they lose one of those other support types. Um, so, so they are actually, like, it's a pretty good infantry division, all things told. They, they have artillery assigned. Uh, they have a lot of intrinsic artillery. So there's a total of, you know, six artillery shots, which means if we can get an attack with our infantry, we're going to try some barrages. Um, absolutely. That may, this is where I think, you know, the counterpunch of the Americans really starts to come in, where using um, your, your artillery barrages... In, as a part of combat, allows you to roll up to three dice. And if you get lucky, you know, you could be doing just three step losses from artillery alone, and then maybe that combat, you get fortunate enough to do one more step loss. Well, that that's one entire, you know, four-step unit destroyed, potentially. So I have some high hopes for the 79th Infantry Division to maybe uh, crack the 21st Panzer, uh, but, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um, and, uh, there were also a couple of, uh, independent units I could assign. I basically gave, uh, the combat armor, uh, combat command A of the fourth armor, uh, some tank destroyers. Um, and, uh, well, I, that's, that's the hope that they can help support, um, 
some of these folks. I couldn't find a, a really obvious good other place uh, to put it on other than maybe, um, well, yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. Like you get these extra support units um, that you could just have be real units and and that's maybe fine, but um, I don't know. This, this, this is the part where like you have to make a decision. Are they real units or are they not real units? And if they're real units, are they even any good? being real units or, or are you better off um, having them go uh, uh, in, in, into support. So I don't know. There could be some bad moves I'm making there, but I want to make sure that uh, this guy, uh, some of these other uh, mechanized infantry units, have some additional support power uh, to, to operate. And so the tank destroyers are going to help with that given they're facing down what is still a pretty spiffy uh, Panzer Brigade that's coming down the way. So that's the preamble for that. Uh, now, um, the replacements that came in, I, I guess I should have talked about replacements before reinforcements. I This was the split die roll, and I still have my, my dice sitting on the player aid sheet showing the die rolls. Uh, you just barely be able to see that. The Germans rolled a five, the Americans, the Allies rolled a one. Um, and in that regard, that means that the Germans got uh, two armor replacement steps and one non-armor replacement steps, which uh, they've managed to use to uh, basically restore the steps lost on the infantry holding Lunaville and then managed to uh, replace some armor losses that they had taken over the, the turn last turn. So really, the Germans got enough replacements where they didn't replace everything lost, but they managed to get um, a lot of things fixed up quite nicely, feeling really good about that. And what was even better was that the Americans uh, rolled a one, which means they got no replacements of either type, which I uh, it is possible for them to get no replacements. So all the damage that the Americans took last turn, several steps of armor, um, the loss of infantry units, their their cavalry, they are coming back at least this turn, which puts the Americans in a tough spot. Um, the other nice thing I should point out is that uh, the uh, there was an armor unit that, yeah, I should show this. Um, so the one armor unit that started the game uh, as eliminated we were able to use an armor replacement to bring it back. It was a member of the 21st Panzer Division, and what I decided to do as it came back was put it in support of the division. So now the 21st Panzer Division not only has standoff support, it also has red support capability. So uh, despite the 79th American Infantry Division looking spiffy, uh, these guys too aren't, aren't totally, um, you know, weak. They're, they, they have... Plenty of infantry here, but they're backed up by 88s uh, and um, some additional panzers. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what to make of that. Um, a, a nice hardy force to operate with. Um, so that was all kind of good news for, for the Germans uh, in general so far. Um, now for the assignment phase, I don't think I'm changing any of the major assignments at this point. Um, if only because if I change the assignment, uh, I will have to leave those artillery points unassigned for a whole turn. I don't really see the need to do that quite yet. Need to wait to see uh, what other reinforcements we can get. Um, that goes for both sides, I guess. Though I do think the 70, 79th uh, Infantry Division could afford to give up some artillery to give to others. We'll We'll see. Uh, that might just be the punch we need to break through over here, retake Lunaburg, and, and roll from there. Um, all the HQs have been reset, so every formation is able to be activated, and we're going to end up getting right into uh, right into that. So now we're going to do our first player um, determination, which we haven't done yet. Uh, not a huge deal, but let me... Make sure we understand how to do that. You would think that that would be something easy to, to see. Um, roll, yeah, with a two die roll for each side. 
The greater roll wins and let's go first. We roll any ties. Easy peasy. So I'll just use some green dice I've got here. Uh, so that's a six. So low, low average. And seven. So the Germans get to go first. Um, and here's what I'll do. I'm going to, this is now a 15 minute intro describing the situation, where we're at, how the situation is changing with the forces coming on the board. I'm going to go ahead and start to play through um, a first activation. I'll decide who that is. I'll play through some of that. And then we'll come back and we'll show uh, the, the aftermath. So um, we'll do a, a cut here and you'll see kind of where we've gotten to. Okay, here we are at the tail end of that first activation. I decided to go, uh, go ahead with our uh, 111th uh, here. And you can kind of see where I had, had placed the objective markers. I decided to do two. Uh, we managed to push back the screen twice, had opened up, you know, this corridor along the main road, and then our, our deployed armor here uh, managed to get up next to uh, that weakened American armor and finished it off, uh, though it was a both losses result. So the Germans took a step loss. We did remove the American unit from the board. Now there is still this guy, but he's not... There's only so much uh, damage that can be done there. Um, and so we're, we're in reasonably good shape. Um, I did not set ourselves up for a barrage because I didn't have enough movement to really get everybody where I would have wanted them to be. But we've, we've kind of, you know, we're set out here in a pretty comfortable position um, to continue to press upon the combat command of the uh, A of the 4th Armor. So... That was pretty good. Um, I think from here, I just I wanted to show where those objectives were. This is where the screen unit started. This is where um, the uh, the armor started. I didn't need those objectives necessarily to do the, the engagements, but um, that was just to help keep me more organized uh, more than anything else, which is kind of convenient for that. Um, so we're, we're good. I would expect the next activation of theirs to be one that is much more heavily... Um, uh, you know, uh, loud, so to speak. But now we have our chance to uh, try to do a continuation. I think I would like to do that, um, certainly. So what we're going to do, we'll roll the die. We need a five or a six. And I got a five, so they get to continue. Um, I did forget to do uh, uh, fatigue. We'll do that really quick. And no, no fatigue gain. So because we only did firing engagements, it's only a one in three chance of gaining fatigue. Um, so now they're going to get to go again. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and mark this guy done. So as soon as we're, we're done with that, uh, we'll be complete. Um, I did forget to move him, though. So what I may want to do is... Eight. Uh, that's a little bit better. And then everyone should be one, two, three, four, five, One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that maybe is better for the moment. Um, okay, so we'll do their second activation now, and uh, we'll we'll see where we get to with with that. Okay, here uh, we are at the end of of the second activation. I'm gonna roll, and still no fatigue. Um, so we, we've managed to use our armor to once again uh, attack the combat command's armor, and we, we've managed to eliminate uh, now two more of the uh, American formation's armor, uh, though unfortunately for the Germans, um, they, they did that having lost a step as well almost every time. So this uh, good unit's down to one step, this unit's down to three steps, um, which is not great, um, and that's a risky a risky gamble I just did to try to put us in a position to where um, we can follow this up with uh, much stronger uh, attacks. Um, I'm not quite ready to to assault some of these positions yet, uh, but we're I think we're doing pretty good here uh, that we have an opportunity. Uh, even on the next activation, um, to make some headway and potentially uh, heavily disrupt the um, 
this whole formation really because that you know depending on what the American player does, these guys could maybe try to come down, knock knock back their uh, their trains or or something. Um, so feeling feeling reasonably good about the situation, trying to make sure I control the road connections so that you know our HQs, our stuff can't get easily jumped. Um, so at the doorstep of, of, of VP space, that's, that's really at this point the most important thing um, that we've got to deal with. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and now it goes back to the Americans. Uh, <laughs> what's funny is we've still not done any, uh, like, I haven't done a regular combat in some time. Like, the Americans did try to take Lunaville, but, but otherwise the Germans are focusing on degradation of the mechanized forces of the Americans so that uh, they have that tactical advantage and be able to take the relevant locations that, that we want to grab and hold and start to dig in once we've done that. So... Um, we'll see, we'll see what we can do, um, from there. We'll go, yeah, to the Americans and what they want to do. Maybe a unoptimal move, suboptimal move, but I activated the combat command arm, uh, on the northern side to take, uh, this location here, just to make sure that the Germans couldn't reinforce it. They succeeded in taking the objective, but they failed their continuation roll, which is a bummer because they have a three or higher. You would think they'd activate again, and my idea would have been to come in and hit the flank of the Germans. It was like, that's a pretty good chance of happening, and we can relieve pressure on the combat command of uh, the fourth, or combat command A. I'm going to get that screwed up. Combat command B could save combat command A by coming on the German flank but they fail to activate it again. So uh, they only got a partial on the first activation. So um, they just didn't, didn't, get, didn't get to where they needed to go. So um, they are poised to help in a later activation, but not good enough. And now we go over to uh, the Germans once more and have to decide what they want to do. What I may use this opportunity to do, uh, what I may try to do here is activate the 15th and try to uh, catch these guys off balance a little bit. We do have red support on the uh, the 15th here for the Germans, which means we can, um, you know, we can pick a path to focus on. And we could either f do a double objective over here if our guys can get in range, which I'm not sure they will. Alternatively, we could point them over here and send a few units to try to disrupt uh, the combat command reserve. Um, we know we have these reinforcements coming in, so it's more about can we get into a position to keep those reinforcements from being super valuable. So I think I may want to do that. I'm less concerned about making an immediate move with these guys. They're covering the flank, so I don't, I don't have a huge need to activate them. I think there's more things I should be activating here. So Probably going to do 15th uh, Panzer Division, and we'll see uh, where we get with that. Okay, here we are after a double activation of the 15th. Uh, is it Panzer Division? Yeah, it is. Or PG Division. Um, okay, so they took uh, Arakor. Um, the first uh, activation brought some units over here. There was some pushing back of some American units. Uh, and then on the second activation, we made a push on Arakor itself and have managed to uh, to win there. That's despite having some ghost train situation as we were adjusting our uh, combat train. And um, ultimately, uh, we are in, in really good shape. Um, so we, we've cleared it. We eliminated uh, some more units of the combat command uh, A and have kind of, we even jumped the HQ, but it ended up being a soft jump, and they kind of teleported back here. Um, so, uh, that that's a problem. <laughs> uh, mostly because now, you know, there's kind of a free reign element here uh, to be able to operate. What What's really important, and, and why this is all coming together, and why I want to explain it is, the fact that we took Lunaville means I can kind of give the 113th Panzer the 
the job to control right here, which means I can kind of keep this, you know, not completely thin, but I can, I can kind of hold here for the moment and move the rest of this uh, set of forces over. Um, six, seven, eight, yeah, we're good. Um, to, you know, hit that flank and apply more pressure knowing that we still have this uh, Panzer Brigade uh, able to kind of come in and help either finish the job or to push further uh, and disrupt the uh, the U.S. forces uh, position or at least start to, to hold strong there. Now, uh, you know, this also means being able to shift more and protect against the counter attack of the uh, Combat Command B. So um, there's still reinforcements to come over the next several turns. So, you know, it, I wouldn't count the Americans out yet, but they have taken some pretty punishing blows uh, over these last couple of activations. So these guys are functionally done here and here. Um, technically, we can still activate uh, that formation, and they have a very good chance of activating again. So um, it, it's a question of, you know, do we have the combat uh, command A you know, make an earnest attempt at counterattacking or, or what? Um, that's sort of the real question. What can they do? Can they try to snipe at some of these uh, um, exposed German armor? That would be a value. Um, try to hold the line, figure out a way to press back on the Germans. They, they can conceivably do it, even without their armor. Uh, they're just working... Uh, working at a bit of a disadvantage, but they have good tactical ratings, which means, um, you know, they, they can still push against the Germans. They need to try to do something there. Uh, maybe even make some kind of sacrifice play to jump their their HQ. That's feasible as well. So um, it's going to be up on the Americans' turn next. Um, not sure. I, I, think, I think trying to, well, I'll, I guess I'll put it this way. They're done. This is done. They're done. We can save this activation for later. I think what we want to try to do is either activate here or uh, here and see what we can make happen, if anything, and we can return to this side of the map because it's functionally done for the moment. Uh, the Germans can still activate the, the light blue formation here. They can still activate the 21st Panzer. So we have a chance for a little bit of initiative to maybe make a difference, make a play uh, here somewhere. We can also be entertaining the idea to shift weight up this way with the CCR, but I don't know that we're going to have enough uh, oomph to really do that. So need to figure something out. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get into it, and I'll show the aftermath. Okay, I decided to go with the uh, 79th Infantry See, starting to come onto the board. And they made an attack attempt here. Now, they had a boatload of artillery, which managed to reduce this unit several steps, um, but failed in the actual assault over the river and took two step losses. But that's okay, because I'm reasonably confident if we just try that again, the artillery is going to probably eliminate that unit. So this puts a lot of pressure on the 21st. They're going to have to decide what they want to do to respond to that. Um, and so what, what, what may happen is we pull these guys back over, allow these guys to come down and cover here, and we help consolidate um, against the, uh, the 79th. So that's the idea for the Germans in response to that. But they can see, if you got a boatload of artillery, destruction barrages, particularly against softer targets, is absolutely great. And I think it does reflect something that some figure I think I've heard or seen that uh, artillery was what killed you, uh, even in World War II. So um, that kind of lines up a lot with what I'm seeing here. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for the American activation. Uh, these guys failed their continuation role. And so we're going to go back to the Germans. Uh, the Germans really can only look to activate uh, just these formations here on the map with the present forces. So they just have to pick one. Uh, it'll probably be 21st Panzer, uh, see what they can do uh, to maybe... Um, disrupt what's happening. They have a pretty safe uh, HQ situation here. We just maybe we move them up like so, um, but not not much more to work with for the moment. 
Okay, played through just a little bit more. Uh, so for the 21st Panzer, we did kind of move up. We hit these guys with some artillery, chipping away some more, uh, another step loss. Um, pulled back the injured unit to uh, recover, ideally, um, if we get more replacements. Um, and then, again, the shifting. Uh, and then a shifting down because the Americans did activate the Combat Command B of the 6th Army. Only got a partial activation, moved up, didn't get to continue, so they're just trying to figure out where they can go to be of use. So then it went back to the uh, 113th, who did uh, start to move their things, moved around their, their baggage train or combat train uh, for, for holding and for later. And uh, they would have loved to have gone again and maybe caused some real pain over here, uh, but they didn't get to do that. So they're done. Uh, but they are set up pretty safely along those river uh, crossings, holding Lunaville. Um, it's now uh, back to the Americans. And they basically, um, if I'm looking at this right, uh, they're done. These guys are done. Done and done. So the Americans can kind of go and use uh, what's left. So they have their second cav, which is down to just this screening unit. They can use the CCR, who've not gone yet, and... They can use the CCA, who have not gone yet. So what I may do is just play through uh, these quickly uh, just to see what happens, what, what's worthwhile to attempt. Um, and then uh, we'll just kind of go from there uh, with the, uh, the rest of the things. I should point out that there, you know, the U.S. forces are starting to accrue a fair bit of um, fatigue. Uh, there wasn't uh, much fatigue gained over here in these last couple of activations because most of them have been movement. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this pans out. So I'll play through these last couple of uh, American activations, and that'll be it for turn two. So obviously this video is going to be a bit shorter, um, even with my commentary, just because I'm playing playing right on through. Uh, but it's, it is looking tough for the American position. Um, as it stands right now, the... Germans are ahead with three victory points uh, because they have Aracor, they have Lunaville, and they're certainly winning the dead armor unit race uh, with the uh, pr pretty convincing destruction of the armor element of CCA 4th Armor. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, and here we are after the uh, activations are complete. So we did do the 100th and 6th. They just moved up. They didn't get a... Uh, a full activation, so for them it's really just about moving forward and trying to figure out what they can do. Um, the Combat Command Reserve pulled back a little bit. They're in a dangerous position. They're about to get mixed up with the remnants of the second cav, and I don't feel comfortable trying to make a big play for them yet. I want to get wait for these guys to get up. Unfortunately for CCB of the 6th Army, uh, they got... Uh, only a partial, so they're moving up as well, just to try to get somewhere uh, to, to make some level of difference. And then finally, unfortunately, I was hoping for big money, big money with the uh, the armor brigade here, but we ended up getting a failure activation, um, in part because of the tracks that we're using for our uh, command. So we had to take a penalty on that, and the... Uh, Man, it just, it's such a bummer. Um, they, they got a failed activation, so they recovered a fatigue. We turned a failed activation into a, a fatigue recovery. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's a bummer. Maybe, and maybe I should have put, I should have bounced him onto here. That would have saved them and given them an activation. So there's some, so there's some bad play here that's contributing to a bad situation. For the uh, for the Americans, so that failed activation is going to be huge because at this point there's very little stopping this German unit from uh, jumping on those guys and probably putting this guy in bad shape, putting these guys in bad shape. Um, they they just have a really great opportunity to come down hard. Uh, so <laughs> things aren't looking good for the American position. Um, of course, this being a somewhat relearning game, I can give myself a little bit of uh, a pat on the back and say, hey, well, you know, 
discovering things along the way, and I'll do better at the convention game coming up. So um, that's it for turn two. Uh, I think we'll just call this a video, and we'll get this thrown up there so folks can see it. And then we'll start getting into September 20th, turn three. Uh, in the next one, we'll try to keep up a fast tempo here. Uh, now that the game's really rolling, um, there's there's less rules look up because I'm getting things correct, I think. And, uh, well, we'll see what else happens. So thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Keep gaming.